What's good YouTube, it's King Greco, and this is Mass Effect 3 once again. This time it's not on bronze, I decided to go put it on gold. I had a pretty exciting silver gameplay with a Krogan using the Claymore shotgun. I don't know if anybody wants to see silver at this point, but if you guys do, I'll upload that. Had some pretty beast moments inside of it. But yeah, this is pretty much the easiest map to play gold on. I played gold and finished quite a few times. Like last night, before I, before I cut the game off, we won like six gold games in a row. And it's crazy. Like, I, when I first cut it on, I was getting kicked out of every single lobby before I even had a chance to, to connect or before I even had a chance to start the game. Like, I didn't even play with the guys. I would join the lobby and say, you were kicked from the game. You were kicked from the game, whatever, right? And I'm like, I don't understand that. I, I, I normally lead lobbies. But these guys have no idea, so they, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I decided to go speed up all the all of the the time down on the floor because you know nobody wants to see that. And also because you know Mass Effect can be a pretty long game. This one was especially long. I think this was like the second time I finished this one. And I decided to go use equipment with this one because you know equipment makes the game look cooler. I mean I don't really don't need equipment. Like I usually don't use it, but I decided to you know for the for the video because I don't really record. Mass Effect gameplay like that. It's very rare that I ever do so. But yeah, this is like, I was saying, this is pretty much the easiest one. And after I kept getting kicked out of those games, I started joining some random people that actually finally let me stay. And we won six games to, to go finish off the night. So, you know, all on gold. That was a quick, what was that? You get about 70,000 per gold. So, yeah, like pretty much about 42, 420,000 uh, credits that I got. In like a short like what is that like three hours but yeah gold is a is a lot of fun if you're playing with the right people you get I really don't really ever play with a headset but these guys are pretty um, pretty good so and also they had pretty good classes that they chose so we decided that um, you know we didn't really need a headset I'm getting blasted by all types of geth the geth I didn't know this at the time but it's best to use this character against the geth and not other people because the geth don't really hurt the decoy so i have my decoy on uh time rather than damage so as long as it's there it distracts them for as long as possible now my biggest problem is that i tend to forget when my decoy disappears because it lasts so long and that can lead to enemies you know catching us off guard but luckily we had two we had two uh, oh, look at me like filling up the kill feed energy drain and three tech bursts we uh we had two people with decoys, so, you know, we were pretty good. Like, right now, I forgot to go put another one. Actually, no, I did have one out. He forgot to put one out, so they over they overwhelmed them. They got two guys on the floor, and one guy's trapped, so I went there to go revive him. And uh, I'm trying to get the other guy, but they, they by the time I finally got him, they got me. Luckily, I didn't go down. I like energy drain while using the Solarian Engineer, because if you fight against an enemy that has shields, and these guys have lots of shields... You get your your energy back. It's kind of like doing a biotic charge every few seconds. And let's well, see if you have your body charged on on, uh, on shields rather than on cooldown speed. Another thing I like about this is that the incinerate does a lot of damage. I don't have my incinerate maxed out, so it doesn't do 100% extra damage to the to the chilled enemies. But yeah, the incinerate does a lot of damage, and I have all my things on area rather than uh, like you know, it's like by area I mean my energy drain. It spreads across like three meters, and my incinerate spreads across three meters. I don't have it do a lot of damage to one enemy. I have it damage every enemy because you never know when you might get a couple of kills that way. And also, it burns at them, and it, it you know it, it gradually like it's basically like poison. So you know, you definitely want to be able to infect. Not in fact, but you definitely want to be able to burn as many enemies as possible. Oh, how did I forget to mention this at the beginning? I'm using a new DLC weapon called the Kishok Harpoon Gun. It's a sniper rifle, and I decided to add on the extra damage. By the, I think it's like I have like 20% extra damage. And I also have have on, um, I think it's the extended, the extended spare thermal clips, so I have 31 shots. I believe that my thing is only level 2 at the time. But it was still good enough. This this sniper rifle, like, now there's things we want to know about it, right? Like, you should know about it. One, it travels. It's not inst it, like it's not instant like most sniper rifles where you just shoot it and it instantly hits whoever's right there. Because it actually has to go travel over a certain distance and speed and things like that, 
you sometimes when the enemy's moving fast you have to go or they're far away you have to go shoot ahead of them like you're leading them into the target also this sniper rifle is the only one that has it does an extra i believe i forgot the, i think it was 2.5 times the damage if you have if you hit him with a headshot so and that's rare because that can take down an enemy instantly most sniper rifles don't have that that much extra damage and even though it says it's the same strength as like a level four a level four widow it may not seem as strong because when you kill when you, if you shoot an enemy they may not die one hit like they will with a widow but if you do it because it's because 80 percent of the damage is what you hit them with and the other percent the other 20 percent of the damage is bleed out over time so for instance if an enemy has 10 bars of health and i shoot them and it does eight damage to them like it takes away eight bars instantly i can leave that enemy alone and know that he will die from the bleed out also sometimes it it can disrupt an enemy kind of like as if you had disrupt disrupt uh, kind of like as if you had disruptor rounds on it and that can come in handy because sometimes an enemy gets in front of you and you think you're gonna die because you have a sniper rifle but then you hit them with the with the bullet and they move back or they get stumbled and things like that kind of like a shotgun so you know that that it comes in handy especially since this weapon has a very very low scope like I, I zoom in and it's almost like I'm not zooming in. I feel like I'm using a, a pistol or something. Like I have no scope on this gun. And the scope has it has like two little mini scopes on it. Like one of them doesn't do anything, but it's a pretty interesting weapon. I, I definitely recommend trying it out. I normally don't use the weapons everybody else uses. So this is like this is like an interesting sniper rifle for me. Like I like to use the Raptor. I like to use the the incisor. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I like using this one. But don't get me wrong, if I ever got a Black Widow, I probably would use the crap out of it. So as you guys can see, I have Cryo Rounds. I believe I also had on Power Recharge Speed because, you know, the, as your weapon gets leveled up, it has lower weight. And at this point, my weapon didn't have a good weight and I needed it for gold. And I, for, I think I have a Sniper Rifle Rail Amp 1 on. I don't really get that much equipment. I tend to go for for like premium specter packs and, and things like that speaking of that if you're not getting an equipment pack I, I was thinking some people say if you want to get equipment you should go buy the the veteran packs because you get three of uh, three of it or whatever right like three meta gel three rockets things like that and i was thinking okay that makes sense because if i buy once one specter pack that costs sixty thousand, and i'll just end up getting five if I buy three veteran packs, I can end up getting nine for the price of, you know, getting one spec for the price of getting five. Or if you decide to buy recruit packs, you can get one, but you can get 12 of them for the same price. That's if you actually have the patience to open up six of them or 12 of them in a row, you know. But don't mind me, that's like a little nerd moment. I really ever buy equipment packs but because I play gold more. I tend to do that whenever I can. And this is look how many Gaff Primes we see every single wave. It's like after wave three, they just decide that they're gonna over overwhelm you with them from that point on. Luckily, the Geth are ironically stupid, and they just fall for the decoys, and they can be tricked into attacking each other. Like that guy, he put sabotage on, on that Geth, so that Geth's working for us. I feel the best team to go, go to go up against a Geth army would probably have to be. Two Solarian engineers and two Quarian infiltrators. That I think you can't lose if you have that combination because half of them will be fighting each other and the other half of them will be distracted. So I think that's a great combination. You have one enemy left, and when you have one enemy left, it doesn't matter whether you're on bronze or gold, they are not gonna last long. Oh, oh, how did I forget to mention this? The Kishok Harpoon gun can be charged. And that makes it move a little bit faster, like, and you're shooting it. You see, that's a harpoon flying in the sky. I don't know why I got stuck there, but that's what it looks like. The harpoon gun, it's not bad. It's, I don't think that charging it really makes it that much stronger. So if you're fighting against, like, a Geth Prime and it's not watching you, you're better off just shooting a whole bunch of them really fast. 
rather than charging up every single shot, you know? This Solarian is pretty new also. As you guys can tell, I don't have that much color on it. The lights are still the same and everything. I think it's like only... It's like a... I only have like basically I could just customize the primary color and the secondary color but hey this 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 class is pretty beast if anybody has one definitely give it a shot like this is a good class to have Solarian Engineer and we're, this is kind of tough because we have to leave our comfort zone that spot in the back to go come out here where we can be attacked by like three different angles and so I keep I keep attacking them, I shoot them, and I check left and right to make sure that we're not uh we're not being like you know swarmed or or anything like that. Look how many we have Gef primes down there. There's a there's a couple Gef pyros. I'm not sure if there's a Gef rocket trooper to our left anymore if they got them. And now they're climbing up in front of us. I'm trying to freeze them. And all four of us are here hacking because if you don't if you don't have all four people doing it in, on gold, you can end up getting your teammates killed. This is wave 10 because you guys know I only shoot out like the last 14 minutes or so. I don't really like the long videos. Because I, I think that it's hard to... And I can understand. Like a person may not have the time to go sit there and watch like a 20 minute video. So, you know, I try to worry about you guys' time also. <laughs> I think I just missed that shot. That's rare. Sniper rifles in this game are pretty fun though. I will say that. Like I... You would think that I wouldn't like them because I, I don't really have sniping gameplays in other games, but oh, this is I'm I'm stupid. Right now, I was trying to revive the guy, right? But once you, if you're charging a weapon, you can't revive a person. It's kind of like if you jump off a of a, of a, like a little hill, like this ladder. If I jumped off it while charging, I'll end up automatically shooting it. You know, it's a, uh, it's weird. I don't know why it's like that. And also, you can't really go into cover when charging because if you try to look. I would, like if you try to like peek your head out of cover, you automatically have the scope up. I don't know why the game does that. I don't know why they haven't fixed that. But hopefully they'll address that inside of a patch. It's not that big of a deal to me though. So this is the final wave, the extraction wave. I put my, I'm trying to move my my decoy a little bit closer so that way we have to worry about them getting too close to us. We can just keep picking them off. And he has a decoy out there also. Those are, like the two areas they come from. So I feel pretty safe. Although I'm gonna I'm gonna make a big stupid decision later on, which is gonna change the course of the game. It's like a crazy ending to this video. I see one Gef guy climbing up the top, and there's three pyros right there. So I'm just gonna keep trying to shoot at them. And every time they hit me, there's so many shields around that I can just use my energy drain and get all my my shield back. Unfortunately, I don't know what I was being. I think yeah, the Gef Prime was hitting me, and because of that, I couldn't. I couldn't shoot. I couldn't dodge. I couldn't. It's like whenever the Gef Prime or a Gef Hunter hits you, you're just forced to take it. They'll take all your health away. I don't. I don't understand why. And this is a dumb situation right here. I had three rockets, and instead of using the rockets, I ran up into the middle and then just basically s sacrificed myself. I don't know why I did that. But luckily, my teammate, he came out with his rocket launcher. He revived the two of us. And we can get back to the extraction zone. We have 30 seconds left. It's probably best to go into the extraction zone when you have, like, 30 seconds. Like, so you should be staying out of it and then make a run for it. But we didn't do that. And this time, I, I got taken down again by Gef Prime. Gef Primes, like, they took me down almost, like, almost all the times I went down this game. And, uh, I don't know. I also don't know why I didn't put out another another decoy yet. I should have by now. But I guess it's one of those things you notice when you're not playing the game at the time. One second left, and look what happens. One second left, and I got I got taken down by another Gef Prime. Ah, oh, man, that sucks. That took way too long. I've done it plenty of times in like 10 minutes less, or like you know, like within like 25 minutes. But this is another one of those games where. I was level 17 at the time, like, I, I came in first place, I got a whole bunch of awards. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you guys learned some tips, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed looking at the new DLC weapon, the Kishok Harpoon Gun.